Hi, my name is Stuart Halloway, and in this screencast, we're going to look at customizing generators with Clojure Spec. When you create a spec with Clojure Spec, Spec will create generators for you at development time. But in some situations, you will want to override these generators. We'll look at how you can pass override options to functions that generate data and to specs themselves. And we'll look at how you can model your domains to come up with better generators using the bind and fmap functions from the generator namespace to create new generators out of existing generators. We'll also look at how to combine multiple models to fully cover the state space of a problem domain. Let's get started at the REPL. I will execute closure forms in the window at the top, and you can see the results of those executions in the window at the bottom. We'll be loading four namespaces, the closure spec namespace with its typical alias of S, and now for the first time, the generators namespace with the alias gen, the test namespace with the alias test, and then the closure string namespace just to implement some functions we're going to test. Let's start with a predicate that doesn't lend itself well to an automated generator. So here we're defining a, uh, an ID in a problem domain where our IDs always have a foo prefix. So in order to be an ID, you have to be two things. So you have an and spec here. You have to be a string, and the string has to start with foo hyphen. So we can define this spec, and then we can exercise this spec and generate some example data, or at least we can try to. And what we're going to find out is that we're going to get an exception saying that we could not satisfy the predicate after 100 tries. And so what spec is trying to do is generate strings at random and then hope that it will happen into one that starts with foo hyphen, which would happen eventually, but it's going to take a very long time. So in order to deal with this, we need to make a smarter generator. So let's create a generator using the fmap function from the generator namespace. fmap uh, will take an existing generator and then apply a functional transformation to it. So we're going to use an exist, uh, or spec that we're going to make up here on the fly. So we're going to make up a spec called int in 1 to 100. So we're going to spec a number from 1 to 100. And then we're going to use the s slash gen form to get the generator for that. And then we're going to pass that generator to fmap. fmap will take the generated values and then transform them by prepending foo hyphen. So this guarantees by construction that these, this generator is going to make data of the shape that we want. Then when you call functions in spec, you can pass overrides. So here, exercise, again, we can pass in the name of the spec we want to exercise, the number of exercises we want to perform, and then additional options. Uh, here, the additional option is that when you want to generate IDs, you should call foogen instead of the built-in spec generator. And so now we'll see, of course, that we get uh, a bunch of generated strings that are foo hyphen some number between 1 and 100, as we requested. You can also specify generators when you create a spec. So we can take our existing form here, the and string, and starts with foo, and then put all of that in a call to s slash spec. Spec has a keyword args option gen that allows you to override the generator that spec will store for a particular spec. So here, instead of taking the built-in one, we're going to use our foo gen. And now that we've done this, we can call exercise and we don't have to pass in an override because we've established that override with the spec itself. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. It's often the case that applications have dictionaries or lookups that are passed around in a variety of contexts. So we're going to spec one of those. We're going to spec a lookup is a map from keyword to string, and it has to have something in it. So we're going to specify that the minimum count of the lookup is 1. And we can exercise that. And we will get a lot of gibberish -y maps from uh, very ugly keywords to very ugly strings. Now let's imagine how this is actually going to be used. It's all often going to be passed around to functions along with a key. So there will be a half dozen or a dozen function signatures in our application that take both a lookup and a key and then end up doing something with them. And most of the time, the key is going to be something that is found. So let's describe that. We'll describe a pair of arguments, lookup finding k. That's going to be the catenation of a lookup, which we just spec'd, and k, which is simply a keyword, with the additional predicate that lookup must contain k. And so the, the predicate is joined to the regular expression, of course, with spec and. 
And when we spec that, we're going to see something similar to what we saw before, which is that exercise is going to have a difficult time picking maps at random and then picking keywords at random and having those keywords actually be in the map. So statistically, it's very likely that we will fail to satisfy that predicate. So now we're dealing with dependent relationships between two values. And the most idiomatic way to deal with this level of relationship or even more complex ones is to use a model for the system and then generate the actual items in the domain from that model. It's often the case that the model itself can double as one of the elements in the domain, and that's the case here. So we're going to use gen bind. Bind takes two things, a generator based on a model, and then uh, a generator that takes that model and transforms it with additional generation into useful things in your domain. Uh, in our case, lookup is going to function both as model and as a domain entity. So we're going to take a lookup, which is a map from keywords to strings, and then generate a tuple. Then we can use gen slash return, which simply returns the value passed into it. And gen slash elements, which takes the collection passed to it and picks something at random from that collection. So here we're going to return the lookup passed in, and then we're going to generate an element, element at random from the keys of that which again, by construction, is exactly what we want. We're going to get a pair where the first item in the pair is a lookup, and the second item in the pair is a key, which is known to be found in that lookup because it was generated from the model. So with this uh, model-based generator in place, we can exercise lookup finding K, and we will see that we get a bunch of generated examples where the lookup has some key in it. Let's look at this one. This one's going to have the key uh, N plus F underscore Z blah, 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 and we'll see that that key is in fact present in the map. Uh, and of course, we know that the generated data is conformant because one of the things that spec does is it makes a conformance check after generating any data. So for example, if you wrote a bad generator that wasn't capable of generating conformant data, a spec would never return that data to you. It would always say this didn't match some predicate after 100 tries or what have you. With these tools in hand, we can return to the uh, original example from the previous screencasts, my index of. My index of takes a source string and a search string and returns the index of the search string in the source string. And we will just use a minimal spec here. We don't have to have all the details that we did for the my index of spec earlier. And in fact, it's a value prop of spec that you can spec exactly as much or as little as you want to. Uh, pedagogically here, I don't need the full spec. I just need to be able to look at the arguments. What you're going to see this time is that the built-in generator does not fail to generate, but it doesn't generate a wide enough range of values. So if we look, we'll see that generating strings at random has no trouble finding the degenerate case where empty string and empty string matches at position zero, and it can find all sorts of non-matching strings because two random strings, uh, especially fairly small ones, are not likely to have an overlap. So we have lots of non-matching strings. And we would have to run this generator for a very long time to get any matching strings. This isn't a very good uh, fidelity to the domain where we imagine that this function is going to be called in lots of scenarios where we expect to find a match. So what we can do is make a model of the domain of strings that have some matching substring. And that model, this is going to be the first time we see a model that's really not an entity in our domain. It's just a model that we made uh, to help us understand our domain and then generate data in the domain. So what does this look like? The model says if you have three strings, a prefix string, a match string, and a suffix string, that model would then allow you to generate uh, both strings and searches within the strings. And we can do that using fmap, as we saw before. We'll write a new function, gen string and substring, that takes an example of this model, so it has three strings in it, prefix, match, and suffix, and it returns a tuple that has in it a string to search, which has the prefix, the match, and the suffix, and then a string to search for, uh, which has match in it, which again, by construction, is going to be a string that's found. So let's actually define the model. And now let's give this a try. We will def my index of args as its own spec, just so we can refer to it easily. And then we will redef the my index of function to have a spec that includes the args we talked about before and the generator that we just built from a model. And now we'll see that when we exercise my index of, we get back lots of interesting matches. So here the letter L appears inside LA, 
and the letters J-O-I-T appear inside the first string J-O-I-T. And of course, this is always going to be the case by construction because we generated from a model in such that this was true. So now we have kind of the opposite problem. We, when we use the naive generator, we got some degenerate cases, and then we came up with a model that gave us an interesting case. And for our tests, we would really like to cover both of those scenarios. Gen one of will let you do that. Gen one of takes multiple generators and then returns a new generator that picks at random from one of the generators passed in. So we will use the standard generator for my index of args. Now we see the benefit of making that a named thing instead of tying its generator to it. So that's the generator that spec would make for you. That's just going to make random strings. And then we'll also use the generator that we just built from a model, which makes strings and substrings of those strings. And with those in place, we'll see that if we redef our spec for my index of using our new generator, gen my index of args, and exercise the function, we'll see that we have a good mix. We have the degenerate case that matches at zero. We have strings that match substrings. We have strings that don't match substrings. And this is a pretty good uh, basic coverage of the state space of our application. So where are we? When you write specs, you get generators for free. And you should do as little as possible and see how far those generators will take you. But there will be times that you'll want to customize generation. When you do this, you can build on generators from existing specs. And in particular, you can make a model of your domain and then use genbind or genfmap to transform that model into generated data in your domain. Admittedly, this model building uh, is an effort, but the effort produces something of much higher value than, for example, types in Java or C-sharp or unit tests that are typical in dynamic languages like Ruby or Python. Because the model directly represents your domain, and it can generate an arbitrary amount of example data or tests in your domain. If you're interested in finding out more, follow the links here to see spec itself at closure.org about spec and the testing and generating library that spec uses at github closure test.check. My name is Stuart Halloway, and I'm a closure committer. Thanks to the hundreds of contributors around the world who help to make closure better. This screencast is a production of Cognitech Inc. Cognitech are the stewards of Clojure, and we provide consulting services around it and a host of other technologies to businesses ranging from the smallest startups to the Fortune 50. You can find us on the web at Cognitech.com and on Twitter at Cognitech.